Good evening, everyone. I'm Reverend Dr. Kimberly McManus, I'm the pastor of St. John Amy Church on Pocomoke City, Maryland. Some of you know me as K Mac. Amen. I'm one and all the same. And today is Thursday, and it's time for our meditation. Again, our meditation reflects around a season and a time for everything. And so we've been talking the last few weeks about um, cultivating compassion because I see this as a purging season. And during this purging season, during this COVID-19 season, don't get it twisted, we're still in it. We still must cultivate compassion. But in order for us, for us to cultivate compassion, we have to learn self-compassion. And that's what we've been talking about. And so we learned that um, before we can actually um, love others, before we can actually have compassion for others, we need to learn how to do so for ourselves, right? Uh, we need to start by being more positive toward ourselves. And so we reviewed our scriptures and there's still the same scriptures, Mark 12, 28 to 31. And y'all know it's my in custom to read from the NIV version. And it reads, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And from the scripture, we see again that Jesus wants us to love each other the way we love ourselves or the way we would or the way we should have loved ourselves. But many of us don't even know how to love ourselves. So how can you learn to love yourself? Um, and that's the question that we've been talking about. How can you do this? How can you learn to love yourself? How can you learn to show compassion towards yourself? But our good Lord, Jesus, he makes it all clear. He says, we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. But what if you don't know how to love yourself? Why ask that question? And again, my good news to you is, God gives us clear directions on how to love ourselves by showing us how to love others. In Ephesians 4, 29 to 32, which says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. And so the way we love our neighbor is the way that we should love ourselves. We, we don't need to hold bitterness toward ourselves. We, we don't need to, to show rage and anger towards ourselves, which those, those things lead us to brawl, um, to fight within ourselves. And having this rage and anger um, leads us to easily brawl, easily, right? Um, with other folk as well. And then we slander our own names because of the rage and anger that we carry within ourselves about ourselves. And then and then when we do this, y'all, it causes all sorts of harm towards ourselves. And so we need to be the neighbor to ourselves that we are supposed to be to others. I'm gonna say that again. We, you and I, we need to be the neighbor to ourselves um, that we're supposed to be to others. So, and again, I mentioned last week, we cannot give away what we do not hold within us. There's absolutely no way. A lot of us say, I want God to send me my significant other. I want my soulmate, yada, yada, my other half, whatever. God made you whole. So don't you dare go around saying, I need my other half. God didn't make half of people. He made us whole, amen. We are created in his image. And I think that is part of our problems is that we don't see ourselves as complete people. God made us complete. When he sends someone to you, that person is an addition. That person adds on. That person um, adds something else. It gives it a little bit something else, right? But that person does not complete you. You find your completeness within God. So I need for us to stop saying that out of our mouths. Oh, that's my better half. That, that You are already whole. Are you telling me you're not whole? You're not a complete person? That you were not whole before you met this person? That you still... You, you can still, the, the wholeness is, is the love of God. You're gonna tell me you can love God before you met this person. So we need to be careful with the words that we speak out of our mouth. This goes back to what I'm talking about, the slander, that we, we slander our own names, we slander ourselves. And again, that statement is so profound. 
We cannot give away what we do not hold within us. We cannot give away what we do not hold within us. We cannot give away what we do not hold within us. So today, again, practice loving yourself more. Practice talking better to yourself about yourself. Practice speaking life over yourself. Practice encouraging yourself. Practice motivating yourself. Practice patting yourself on the back. Practice telling yourself you're beautiful. Practice telling yourself you're handsome. Practice telling yourself you're intelligent. Y'all get what I'm coming from. Practice speaking life over yourself. Do these very things for yourself and to yourself that you do for others. Because again, it is impossible for you to love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. And so we talked about Dr. Lisa Rankin's list of what we need to do to cultivate compassion, which is universally valued. We looked at the first three ways and tonight we're gonna try to look at the next seven. I have very little time, but I'm gonna do all I can to try to get this to you quickly. Um, number one, start by practicing self-compassion. We talked about that, that our inner critics are the hardest. We are the ones that put ourselves down. We are the ones that punish ourselves for our mistakes. You say you give it to God, he forgives you, but we don't forgive ourselves. We gotta start by practicing self-compassion within ourselves, right? Um, and so I told you we're going to do the inner child meditation technique. I know we're not going to get into it today. I try to keep this to about 20 minutes. So hopefully we'll get through this and then we can do that next week. Okay. Um, the, the, so that's when I told you, um, this is now week three about standing naked in a mirror. Right. And then I told you, if you couldn't do full length, looking at yourself, um, I said, start with, if you had on a jacket, pull a jacket off, you know, some people never see their own naked arms. Like, um, right. And so that's that's what I was telling you to do. So this is week three. I do pray that you've made progress toward looking at yourself naked in the mirror. I'm just talking about you, you by yourself, not putting on the show, not trying to go on um, TikTok or whatever people are doing. Mom, I'm talking about you having this time with yourself, not in front of your mate, but with you and yourself. I said, if you couldn't do that, you didn't look in the mirror, look at your face then for five minutes, three times a week play relaxing music in the background and say to yourself, I love myself. I accept myself. I am safe. Encourage yourself. I said then, and then you will continue to do that. Um, with, this is again, it's a third week. So by now you should have increased it 10 minutes, five times every day for one week. Um, then, and then I would tell you if, you, if you've done that for the past two weeks, then move to the mirror. And again, if you can't stand full naked, I understand then then remove layers. And that's what we're trying to do is remove layers. And, and so you're doing it in a physical sense, but I need for you to get rid of the layers that you're carrying that prevent you from being that person that you see yourself from being, that person who wants to be loved. And again, you cannot be loved if you don't love yourself. You can't give out to somebody what you don't give to yourself, okay? The second thing was put yourself in someone else's shoes. Um, it's very hard to do. We learn how to do that. My, my, my grandma used to say, sweep around your own door before you can sweep around somebody else's. And so that's the same difference. You can't, you cannot, uh, you can't put yourself in someone else's shoes. You can't sweep around someone else's door if your own door is not clean. Um, you, you, you gotta, you gotta know what it's like to go a mile in your own shoes before you go talk about somebody else. Okay. You don't know what battle somebody is in. Um, you have no idea what somebody else is going through. Okay, so let's be kind to each other because people wear smiles on their faces on the outside and the inside, they're crying. Let us not add to that, okay? So let us put ourselves in someone else's shoes. Number three, move beyond your self-reference. And remember, we talked about this. We are living in a generation where people are all about me, right? And it's not about the me and me. It's a collective us. And so a lot of people who walk around exclusively thinking that everything affects them. And y'all met people like that. They will turn things around. Everything affects them. Um, something happens, you no, know, it, it's about how it affects them. Um, they will always shift it for them. Um, they have this me mentality, um, very egotistical. They're not altruistic at all, right? They, they gotta learn how to move beyond that self-reference. Help them to move beyond that self-reference not by being mean to them, right? Sometimes people are allowed to do, do this growing up, right? Sometimes parents are trying to give their children better lives than they had, quote, quote. And they will allow this me um, inclusivity thing to come around instead of, um, and so what they're doing is excluding everybody else because they're only talking about them. 
And so we got to learn how to show compassion to these people so they can learn how to realize it's just not about them. This is not this is not a me thing. This is a us thing. Okay. Number four, practice kindness without people pleasing. Everything you do, you are not being kind just so that somebody can go back and say, um, see hope over there. Um, yeah, hope just gave me a thousand dollars, but she told me I had to stand on the corner and tell everybody that is not what Jesus did when he helped people. He didn't want, he didn't want it to be broadcast, but people just had to go back and tell, but Jesus was like, don't go to hell. Okay. So you practice kindness. You do because it is the thing to do It's the right thing to do to practice kindness. Not because you're looking for approval from somebody. You're not trying to be a people pleaser. Uh, or, or you're not looking for accolades, right? Um, that is not what we call authentic kindness. Authentic kindness comes from a place from within. So um, there, there's, there. you have to understand that you give because you have um, the gift of giving, but somebody needs to receive. But you're not giving simply because you're seeking attention. You're not giving sim simply because you're pleasing your sorority. You're, you're pleasing your fraternity or whatever other group. That, that is not the reason why you give. If that's all, the only reason you give, then you're truly not being kind and you're truly not being the one that serves. Um, and then you say, I want to be like Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate. Um, he practiced service, um, servant leadership. And, and you're not being like Jesus if that's the only reason why you give. If that's the only reason why you practice kindness is to people please and to seek attention. Number five, Relax your judgments. What if we could all just um, get rid of these dualistic judgments of that everything has to be either right or everything has to be wrong. Everything has to be either good or it has to be bad. Everything has to be black or it has to be white. Everything has to be pretty or it has to be ugly. Y'all get me. Um, we're looking at the spectrum. The spectrum, if you remember back in the day, there's a bell curve, right? Y'all know how they used to grade folk on um, that bell curve. Most people fall within the middle of the bell curve. That is where the great C comes into place. Then you have the outliers. You have the A, you have the B in the middle. Then you have the C that's straight up in the middle. D as we fall down and F, the outliers. People, fewer people make A's, fewer people make F's. The most people make a C. So that's what we're looking at. So it's like, where, where is the, where can we find this? How can we, how, how can we get rid of the dualistic judgments? You're either um, smart or you don't. What about those people who are, um, can do a little bit of everything. They may not be uh, experts in this and experts in that, but they can do a little bit of everything. Does it make them bad? Does it make them not as smart as those people who are more, have more experts, expertise in a certain field? Um, than others uh, so that's just something to think about like we need to release judgment of others and in order for us to release judgment of others we got to start letting go of our own self judgments and so again my goal is just to come back to some of these things that we're talking about for the sake of time number six we need to listen generously um rachel uh, dr rachel raymond says um she teaches the practice of generous listening as a gateway to compassion and a tool for healing she says, most of us don't truly listen. We're always interrupting, judging what someone says or trying to fix. And so um, Dr. Riemann says, listening creates a holy silence. When you listen generously to people, they can hear truth in themselves often for the first time. And in the silence of listening, you can know yourself and everyone. Eventually you may be able to hear in everyone and beyond everyone, the unseen singing softly to itself and to you. So learn how to listen. Again, a lot of people do do that. They already, while you're talking, they're already preparing their statement. They're already in court preparing their statement, right? <laughs> so that's not what you need to do. That's not being a good listener. That's not being an active listener, right? So um, in counseling, we, we teach. So what I hear you say is, right? Because we, as counselors, we have to be active listeners. And we have to make sure that we completely understand what it is the person is presenting to us because we can help them heal if we're not paying attention. So the first thing is learn how to be an active listener and do so by actively listening to yourself. Number seven, heal your own trauma. Um, again, they said, if you hold on to unhealed trauma, what's gonna happen y'all is that you're gonna unintentionally traumatize other people. I hope you hear me. If you hold on to stuff that has bothered you, to stuff 
that has um, gotten you over the years, stuff that has made you feel small. You keep holding on to it. You keep bringing it back up. You keep doing, I don't know, what you end up doing is unintentionally traumatizing other people. Because unfortunately, misery loves company. And so what happens is, and y'all know people say this, and it's true. A lot of times, an abused child grows up to be an abuser. A person that was bullied as a child grows up to be the one that now bullies, okay? Why? Because that is, is inside, it is fighting to come out, and what we end up doing is unintentionally uh, putting off on someone else what was put off on us. And so in order to heal, you got to be whole. And you got to release this um, stuff that has kept you bound for years. So you got to learn how to heal your own trauma. Seek counseling. Seek therapist. Um, your pastor may not have a counseling background. Okay? So I'm telling you now, your pastor may not have a counseling background. You need to seek someone who has a counseling background who can help you heal from this trauma. Number eight, practice presence. Try being fully present with everyone you encounter. Some of us, um, we can't hold a conversation. We're too busy doing this number right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. You want to be, you when you're talking, you want people to be aware and in that moment when you're talking, don't you? So why can't we not do that for each other, right? So let's practice presence. Let's, let's, let's stop multitasking when someone's pouring their heart out or even not even pouring their heart out. If somebody, you never know what that person needs for you, from you. It could just really be eye contact. It could just be body language. It could just be a smile. You just don't know what you're being present means that means you also have to be present in what is uh is happening in your own life okay if you're grieving it's okay to grieve it's okay to grieve it's okay to grieve it's okay to grieve let me say this to somebody who's listening it's okay to grieve it's okay to grieve it's okay to grieve i need for you to practice presence even within your own stuff, whatever you're going through, be present. Don't send yourself somewhere out there. You just, I'm just gonna enjoy myself and you know you're going through a thing. It's okay to go through it because you don't wanna harbor something. You wanna be able to deal with it in the name of Jesus so that you can move on and be healthy, healthy and moving on so that you don't unintentionally harm somebody else. Number nine, Practice radical self-care. In order to truly offer compassion to others, you first have to fill yourself. You gotta be kind to yourself. It's not being selfish, y'all. It's not being selfish to take care of yourself. Practice self-care. Give yourself a hug. <laughs> it's okay. Once you can tend to your own needs, you can better serve others. Guess what? You're gonna have not just the energy to do it, but you're gonna have the love to do it. You're gonna do it out of a kind spirit, not out of one of those spirits like, yeah, let me go over here and help, knowing you don't want to help. So when you when you practice this self-care, then you can now freely, you have that energy that is abundant in you now, that love. So now you can go and give it to someone else. Now you can go and uplift someone else. And number 10, and I'm gonna start right here and we'll finish this next week. Number 10, try the 21 day compassion challenge. Dr. Rankin adds, she says, to help you learn more tools of practicing compassion with yourselves and others, practice the 20 day compassion challenge. And what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna, it's gonna, this is, I was hoping that we would finish this probably next week, but I think I'll just carry this on for right now. Um, um, and what we'll do is look at the 21 day compassion challenge, but there are still some of the other um, pieces that we didn't get a chance to get to which are our positive statements. And so because we run out of time and I wanna make sure I can get this to you on time, we will come back to it. We have to come back and do our meditations. And again, I don't want to just run past this because we really need to learn how to show some self-compassion. We, we have to learn how to do that in order for us to be able to show this 
compassion toward others in order for us to show this love toward others, okay? And so let us pray. Father God, we pray today that this has fallen on some will in the ears, God. We pray today, God, that whoever needs to hear, let him or her have the ear to hear and understand the importance of showing self-compassion. Lord, we pray today that that persons listening will understand it's okay to, to love himself, to love herself. That it's okay to say no sometimes to others. That it's okay to put himself or herself first. That it's okay to encourage herself or himself. It's okay to motivate himself or herself. There's, there's nothing wrong with it at all. And so, Lord, we pray today for those sisters and those brothers who need to understand it's okay. It's okay. And it's okay. And Lord, you know we'll be sure to give your name all the honor, the glory, and the praise. And as in your son Jesus' matchless name we pray, let the church say, amen. Amen. Y'all have a blessed um, night in the Lord. And um, the Lord's will, I'll see you Sunday morning um, for our youth um, takeover. Amen. So we'll see you then. Have a blessed night in the Lord.